Well, if you're thirsty, the best option is to use the point two. Hey. What's going on, everybody? Jay Hayes just saying me doing a review on a device that I was sent for the purposes of the review. Okay, uh, so OFRF. I, I don't know what it is, but there's a lot of reviewers that keep calling this company off. That's what you can't. Uh, this is already starting off bad. I don't understand how a company wants to be called something, but then they just throw a random letter inside of it. If I'm going to say my name is Jay, I'm not going to spell that with the letter P. You know, like I'm, I'm just, that's not what I'm going to go for because it doesn't make much logical sense. Anyway, OFRF, they did the Gear RTA, which I absolutely loved alongside of the Wasp Nano as far as small, compact RTAs are concerned. And one of the things that I had brought up was I was under the impression that OFRF or O for her was is the same company as Watofo. And the reason being is because a lot of the stuff that you get from Watofo is very similar to this company. People have also posed the argument that they're in the same building, one's on the first floor, the other one's on the third, so they're gonna look like each other. I don't understand how that justifies it, but I still think that these are the same companies. I legitimately do. I really, really do. When the Profile RDA came out, this company came out right alongside of the Profile RDA with different little strips of mesh. And always something that I bring up, not so much with sub ohm tanks, which I'm going to be doing a review on today, but on any kind of product that's going to use a type of mesh, wire, or plate, what do you do if it's so proprietary that if later on down the road the company stops making them? There's going to be no way to use that product. People are actually going to have to buy old school mesh, cut it in rectangles, and then do it. And at that point, they would just rather do regular coils because I would think that that mesh would be a whole lot more inconsistent. You know what I want to start doing? When I'm getting these mesh RTAs, I'm going to do that. I'm going to use probably a 400 by 400 or maybe a 3 by 3 and try to use that mesh instead of the mesh that they give me. That's actually a pretty good idea. I know I have that mesh somewhere, so that, that wouldn't be a problem. Anyway, I'm a little pumped up about today because it's something out of the norm. You know, it's not a box mod, it's not a dripper, it's not an RTA, it's not another pod-based system which we're seeing so much. It's actually a sub ohm tank. Well, it is simple to do a review on it. You just open it up, you take a look at it, and then you just vape on it. What's usually happening now is a lot of people acquire their sub ohm tanks from a device that they bought that it came with, like as a kit. There are a couple tanks that are out there that you can buy solely but you guys have to look back six months ago you could buy the ul valerian all by itself and everybody was talking about that that's just a reference but then there were certain tanks that were so good like the nunchaku tank the only way to get that was actually with a kit and then i think they started selling that tank all by itself probably one of the best sub ohm tanks i've ever used and as always with sub ohm tanks i don't really give them much of a rating because it's it's another sub ohm tank but just because this is different, I'm pumped up about it. So without further ado, let me bring this down for about 25 seconds, show you everything inside of the box. Then we're just gonna bring it back on top and I'm gonna let you know my final thoughts on the OFRF, Next Mesh sub -ohm Tank, or better known as OFF. Start spelling read with the letter C. So without further ado, let's flip it this is the box that it comes in now on the front it almost looks like a website doesn't it or some type of app like you click this and then that's going to make a bunch of apps available here up here you got a sign in then a menu here that is an awkward take no okay so let's take a look at the top here we have conical and mesh tank i think the reason why they're doing it is just to highlight that they're using a conical situation on the top it says their website and then powered by ofrf next mesh coil technology on the bottom same thing on the side on the other side you have your upc and a scratch and sniff vanilla taco flavor and scented on the back side of the box everything that's included Designed in California, made in China. Who exactly in California designed this? I'd like to know that. I feel like that's very important information. Open up the box, get a little user manual for the sub ohm tank. Some stickers. The design of the coil. And this is something that I think is very, very important. Basically, what they promote on their website is that they have a different type of coil than what we've already seen before. The innovative triple density conical mesh tank. 
So they're saying it's innovative, and I'm assuming that's because of the coil, because I've never seen anything like this. But they're promoting a lot of things about this, and some things are going to be very, very difficult for me to prove. For instance, there's your coil that's innovative, and then you got this twin absorption wicking system. Unique wicking system delivers rapid and consistent cotton saturation, ensuring you never experience a dry hit. Yeah, okay. All right. And then you have a dual cotton configuration. You have the outside wrap and then the inside. I have seen this done on other coils, and obviously when you look at that, it reminds you of the Crown 3. Double vapor compression system. I feel like they're just adding things and just saying, hey. I'm going to assume the reason why they're saying that it's super innovative is because of this little chimney section that goes over the coils, but we've seen this before as well. This is very, very interesting, this section. They're saying that the tank itself is very shock resistant and less likely to crack because of this material right here. I'm going to assume that they mean polycarbonate tank glass. Polyethylene tetraferocerbiter glycol is what this is. All this extra shit, it's plastic basically. This is the stainless steel mesh that comes with it, the 0.15, which we will go over shortly. Looking on the inside of there, I don't see any kind of conical configuration for the coil that may be just for the other one that's already inside of the tank. Then on the bottom of the box, you get a little Ziploc baggie. So this is what I'm talking about. This is, I don't even know why I open it. It was clear on the front, a bunch of different O-rings if you wanna change any of the colors that are on the inside of this. It's a very, very large sub on tank, that's a fact. You got Gargamel up here on the top. Finishing could have been a little bit better on the top, and you do see an arrow here, which is what you're going to push. Oh, that is super stiff. So once you open this up, you have this little opening right here, which is where you put your bottle and you fill it up. And this is kind of the leak-resistant thing. I know that there was another tank that this was on. I just can't remember it because it's been such a long time. And close that up. Very, very very tight and I'm assuming it's because of that plug. On the bottom of it, next mesh and then their website right there on the bottom. A little tight as well and they have this really nice knurling down here. I'm assuming they're just putting that there so you can grab this and then take the coil out. And obviously something else they're promoting with this is the... Man, that finishing on the inside there. Oof. God, that is bad. Oh, so it's like the Aspire Nefo tank. Basically, this is all going to stay attached. Aspire Nefo does exactly the same thing. It has two sections that come to a part down here on the bottom where you unscrew it, you pull it out, and then you just put it back in and then screw in the base. So more often times than not, though, if you do unscrew this a little bit on the Nefo, when you try to put this all back together, it's not going to work very well. I'm assuming that this one is the non-stainless steel. And again, I'm not really seeing a lot of the conical shape here. It looks like a regular friggin' coil to me. Okay, so the double cotton, I'm assuming they mean this cotton right here, and then there's another section of cotton as well. I wouldn't quite call that innovative because Smoke has done that before with their coils. We are going to use the .2, so what we're gonna do is just prime this coil, get it good to go, put a couple little drops on there. You know, back in the day, it wasn't so open, so you were able to actually prime that up a little bit better, but it's not going to be very easy for me to do. The machining is really well done on this tank. So we'll let that sit for about five minutes prior to using it just to make sure it gets fully saturated. And once again, that is the next mesh tank. Let's bring it on the top. Back on top of the OFRF next mesh sub ohm tank sitting on top of the J Hayes 20. You better shut your face. 44.5 watts on a 0.33 and it's supposed to be a 0.20. It's a little bit off, but... Let's just do it. Oh, how fun. So now that um, there's, oh, great stuff. Good stuff. Well, if you're thirsty, the best option is to use the point two because, you know, um, Oh, I love sub ohm tanks that do this. It, it's almost like if you don't know what it is you wanted, you okay. <sighs> you 
You know, this is why a lot of people hate sub ohm tanks. Yep, that's leaking like a motherfucker. That is great. Oh, the amount, the amount of motivation I have to use this. Great coil. Everything about this is great. Here's an idea, OFRF. Since you can't figure out how to spell off and remove the letter R from your name like a normal fucking human being, you can maybe focus on, since we, we're not focusing on spelling, we're just kind of forgetting about that, you know, bare basic essential things. Since we're forgetting that and you're forgetting how to build a coil, um, and you focused a lot of fire on the machining of the tank, which is fantastic. Instead of worrying about making uh, little sheets of metal for other RDAs that aren't yours, I'm just using your words, not mine, maybe you should focus on the coils that you're putting inside of your sub ohm tank since you're trying to push that. That would make more sense, would it not? Because this is a piece of fucking shit. I bet you if I take a paper towel and we haven't done any jump cuts whatsoever, it's only been sped up, I bet you more stuff leaks out. Let's just see, shall we? Okay, we're gonna take the paper towel. We're just gonna turn this. You didn't see anything. That's okay. That's okay. We might be okay. No. Nope. We're not okay. So, um, I'm just going to put that aside because I have a certain place for that. And it's not on top of my mod. It's on top of my wall. Uh, this is a piece of shit. I legitimately don't know how a company is so focused fired on making little sheets for an RDA that was made about eight months ago. While I get it, there's people that like your mesh, but why would they buy yours versus Watofo? I would challenge anybody to do a blind taste test to take their mesh versus other mesh from Watofo, put those in five different profiles, because I know there's a lot of people that use that RTA or RDA, it doesn't matter how you're doing it, and then just kind of wing it. You know, have your buddy wick it up or something. It doesn't matter if it leaks, it's only a matter of just tasting it. And then tell me you taste the difference between the wire or the mesh. I bet you you don't. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's leaking all over the mod now. That's, you know, there's there's so many good things about this. Some people put lotion on their hands to moisten it up. Don't even bother. Just put the juice in your tank and hold your mod. Because VG is a natural lubricant. I, I can't... Oh, God, the spit back. Use the other coil. How about this? Go fuck yourself. Sound good? How about you go buy this tank and you use the other coil? We shouldn't be at a point. We should not be at a point where we have to use something else to figure out why that leaks. You would think that in the industry that China's in of making these tanks and making these coils that they would have perfected it by now. It's been what, five years since you guys have been in the vape game? Let's just, let's give you the benefit of the doubt and say that your company is not located in China. It's on an island somewhere where everybody lives in one tall high rise place and you, Listen, people living in rooms, I get it. You're trying to make a living totally fine. The quality of life sucks. Well, the quality of your coil is about equivalent to what your quality of life is. It's fucking garbage. I think you should stop making coils and focus fire on what you were before. Because that would be a whole lot more successful than what this is. If I was to do Shit. Garbage. There's no words for that gibberish that I'm speaking. It's bubbling, so that means it's being prepared to leak again. It's a shame, too. This is the other one. I don't know what it is. It's probably the point, point 0.15. It's probably what this one is. The other one's a point 0.2, but it picked up at a point 0.33. So they're good. They're accurate. 
gonna flip this. I'm not even gonna prime the coil. I'm just gonna let this sit for a little bit. Maybe shimmy, shimmy, cocoa puff, shimmy, shimmy, yeah. Juice up my tank and throw it all over me. Okay, now you can see that there's like no juice in that tank. So let me do what a normal person would do. I, I don't wanna put this on a mod yet. I'm just gonna kind of, I'm not gonna fill it up. Cause I, I, I know, oh God, not even filled up, just halfway. The, the O-ring on the top or the gasket, mmm. All right, so that is good. I even closed up the airflow, okay? So we're just gonna open it up. I'm gonna do kind of a false hit here. Good airflow. I don't know if it's fully saturated. It's only been sitting for a minute or so. A little hit. This is picking up at a 0.19 now. Not bad. A little bit of better wicking here. This one hits a lot harder. We're gonna do the side test now. So here we go, put it to the side. A little drip, nowhere near what it was before. A little bit. You know, while I talk about this for a second, let me let this sit. Was it Crown? There was a tank that came out. Oh, man, am I feeling that. There was a tank that came out. I want to say it was a Crown, where basically any kind of juice that went through the coil sat at the base, like in a false reservoir, if you will. And when you drew air back in, inhaling it like you normally would, it would recycle that juice. That was either smoke or UL that did it. I want to say I'm 98% sure that it was UL. If we're making everything so innovative with this tank, why did we not factor in coils leaking? I get it, coils leak, but guess what? That's $4 or $3 that a consumer has to waste their money on, go buying another one. And then if that happens again, who do you think the consumer is going to hold responsible? You as a company? No, they're not. They're going to hold the company that they bought it from responsible because of your fuck up. There's a lot of things that you could do with a coil that make it not leak. I can name about 50. For instance, let me just help you out, right? Let's just put this on the record. You could make another piece of mesh that has nothing to do with the coil that sits at the bottom and it's basically airflow goes through it like it would if it was honeycomb airflow and air would travel through it it would be a little bit restrictive but you could perfect this matter of fact there was an rda that i did a review on i'm sure i'm already going to call him out right to vape because that guy watches every fucking video of mine there was an rda that i did a review on it might have been a company based out of pennsylvania that had ass loads of little air flows all over it. Like a thousand holes. Maybe it was like 166. But no matter what you did, no matter what, how much juice you put down, the holes were so small that the juice couldn't travel through it. Why are we not doing that with coils? Your problem is solved. Just like that. And then every time you would inhale, guess what it would do? Go right back on that cotton. Wow. Wow. Amazing, isn't it? So this is the little sheet that is in there that's wrapped on the inside. This is kind of built how the smoke coil was. And this one isn't isn't nearly as bad. There's a little bit of residual juice, but that I'll forgive because with the airflow that you got. But listen, the little innovation that I just gave you seriously could be implemented. And I just gave you that advice for free. So take that and use it because this, it's not gonna work. Focus more fire on that. Being innovative, not doing stupid shit and then calling it, oh, this has got double flavor chamber. The fuck out of here. This has got double flavor chamber like I have a vagina between my legs. I've kept it real. Have you? No, you have not. This is not innovative. Jay Hazen. We're gonna take this tank. They say that this tank is very, very difficult to crack now. They may be talking about the glass with juice, but because there is that ridge, I assume that they mean the actual glass itself. Let's see, just a regular fall, nothing crazy if it cracks. You ready? And just a regular fall. Can you see where I'm dropping it from? 
regular fall. Okay, I landed on a, I didn't, it landed on a side right there. So let's do another one real quick. And so I got the mod in the hand. I'm like, oh, hey, I'm man, I missed you. Oh, wait, what? Hey. Throw it at me? Yeah. Go, throw it at me. Like at like to harm you? At your butt? Where do I throw it? Just soft over here. On the ground? On me. Okay. Go. <laughs> did it hurt? No, wow. This didn't break at all. Like it keeps landing on weird spots. So I'm just gonna give it a toss at the wall. Yo. Chuck it from right there. Where? To the wall. Like hard? Yeah. Or just hard from here? Yeah. Holy shit. Wow, so it's like a plastic that, holy shit, dude. Yo. Holy shit. Hold on. Yo. Are we fucking kidding right now? Okay, well, um, you're not gonna break this plastic. You're gonna break the tank before you break it. Holy shit. <laughs> what do you wanna do? You wanna do it? You want me to do it? Hard? Like you want me to actually try to break it? Yeah, hold on. Why in the dirt? So it's in the crease. Okay. Hard? Yeah. Dude. I don't know. Harder? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's not breaking. Oh. We got oh, a hole. Oh, oh, we got it. We got a hole. Do it, Karen. Again? Finish him. Dude, look at this glass. Holy shit. Well, it's definitely good material. So I guess they're gonna, wow. There you go. Wow.